There we go again. Hey people, I'm back with another add-on for the macro pad, but this time you can use it on all QMK keyboards that use matrix RGB lighting. Here's what we are going to do. We're using the LED next to the encoder to show us which layer we're currently on. I'm also showing you how to flash the firmware without much hassle. I'm using four layers on the macro pad. The first layer only includes things I use for the streaming setup, like muting my microphone and switching scenes. With the 2, 1 button on the rotary encoder, I switch to the next layer, which is then used for all my DaVinci Resolve editing, where I have navigating and seeking through the timeline on the rotary encoder, and also making all the functions for cuts available on the buttons. On the layer after that, I have some even faster seeking options for scrubbing through the timeline. On the last layer, I then have my things for Photoshop and other image editing applications for changing brush size on the rotary encoder. But when it sits like that on the desk, I don't know which of these layers is currently active. So for that, we could either use the raw HID LED control that we set up last time, or if we want this to work even without an app running on the PC, we can just add this to the firmware. I thought this is a pretty basic feature, but was surprised that when I searched for some examples, they were either quite hard to find or way more complicated than they needed to be. So let me show you how to do this the simple way. In our keymap.c, we just add a simple code block for the switching of the indication lights, where the LED index defines which LED you want to change and the case statement identifies which layer is currently active. You can play a lot in here and there's some more advanced and complex examples on the QMK docs, but this is all we need for now. Though you could also change the colors to fit your style a bit better. Now we can compile the firmware with the QMK compile command followed by the keyboard name and key map. If you want more info on how to set up QMK with file support, check out the second video in the MacroPad series. You don't need to do this if you're using this MacroPad, the finished hex file will be linked in the description below. If you need to compile on Windows, I can recommend using the WSL2, Windows Subsystem for Linux 2, to run QMK. This is a lot faster than the QMK MSYS thing that I showed you in another video. Take care here that the firmware size will fit on the microcontroller, so any value less than 100% is fine, though you need some memory for features like the in-memory macros. I only say this because recently I did an oopsie with that and overrode the bootloader. We then open QMK toolbox and select the hex file we just created. WSL2 files are stored in the wsl.localhost path, by the way, and also select the auto flash checkbox. So you don't need to be fast to click the flash button after we reset the keyboard to the bootloader. Now is the perfect time to back up your current macro pad layout so that we do not need to add everything back manually. You can save the layout in the vial file menu. If you watched the other MacroPad videos, you might remember that I did not add a reset button to this board. Otherwise, check out the playlist. That's just because we do not need a physical button to reset back into flashing mode with a vial enabled keyboard. We don't even need to use a key map to reset, which would waste valuable space. We can just use the settings menu in vial to boot into the bootloader directly. For this action, you also need to keep the vial unlock combo pressed for some seconds as all firmware related features are locked by default for security reasons, which is actually a really good move by Vial. Then with QMK toolbox, you see a device show up and automatically flash the new firmware. If it doesn't, just click the flash button manually. When everything is done, the macro pad automatically restarts and you can refresh the list in Vial to see the keyboard reset back to the default key map. Just load your saved layout now and you're done. The cool part about this LED setup is that on the first layer, the indicator LED is off. So you have all of them for animations and even on the other layers, only one LED is used for the indication of the layers. So everything still works like it used to. In the future, I could add a separate LED that just lights the rotor encoder to show the layer. But that needs to wait for another time because currently I'm working on some more exotic keyboard types. When I'm not live on Twitch, you can see my progress on those things on Discord or Instagram. Socials are linked in the description below. This is also how I update the firmware for all of my keyboards, not only the macro pad. All this is just to show you there is no magic involved when trying new things with your keyboard. And once you got comfortable with compiling and flashing firmware, there's so many more things you can do.
Thanks for watching, hope you were inspired a bit and have fun flashing your firmware. Also, thanks for all the support from all of you. It has been such a nice journey here on YouTube. See you next time.